Hello. In this video, we're going to talk very briefly about alkyne isomerization. In a previous video, I shared that alkyne isomerization uh, can throw a monkey wrench into alkyne synthesis by the E2 elimination pathway. And the reason for that is that sodium amide as a strong base is actually a strong enough base to catalyze the isomerization of an internal alkyne to a terminal alkyne, which is then deprotonated rather rapidly to form the acetylide anion. Uh, first, some, uh, you know, some equilibrium constant. And it turns out that the, the equilibrium constant of this first reaction isn't uh, actually all that large. Uh, in fact, it's actually just uh, a little bit below 1. It's around uh, 0 0.8. Uh, depending on, oops, that doesn't look right. And depending on whose source of thermodynamic values you use. Uh, but as I mentioned in an earlier video about the uh, acidity of alkynes, uh, the equilibrium constant of the proton transfer is like 10 to the 13. So that means as each terminal alkyne is formed, it's going to be very, pretty uh, readily deprotonated. Uh, and, I, and I know we need to be cautious about equating uh, thermodynamics and, and kinetics, uh, but generally, under similar circumstances, the more exothermic a reaction or the more exergonic or the more spontaneous a reaction is, uh, the more quickly it occurs. Yes, there are the counterexamples, but, you know, this is, uh, this holds true here. Uh, it turns out that the, the the process goes through an intermediate molecule called an alene. Uh, an alene is, is a molecule that has uh, what we would call a cumulated uh, diene. It has two alkenes uh, in the same molecule. Uh, and they share a carbon. <clears throat> we talk a little bit more about alenes uh, in, a, in a further chapter. We talk about uh, poly molecules that have multiple alkenes in them and how they sometimes behave differently than regular alkenes. Uh, the important thing to know uh, is that this is a particularly interesting molecule. It's sp hybridized here at the central carbon, and so actually the the flat representation. That, that I've shown here is not necessarily the, the best representation of uh, the geometry of this molecule. It's actually better to use some uh, wedges to show that there's uh, one carbon is in the plane uh, and the other carbon's hide groups are perpendicular to the plane. This geometry doesn't particularly matter for this reaction, but it's an in interesting that this molecule is not planar like you might expect from, from its drawing. Uh, the generally agreed upon mechanism for this reaction starts with sodium hydride deprotonating a carbon atom next to the alkyne. And I can't immediately tell you what the, the pKa value for that hydrogen is. I don't know it off the top of my head, uh, but I can tell you, actually, I wanna use, use equilibrium arrows here because uh, we are talking about a situation in equilibrium. But what I can tell you is uh, that it's, probably of a similar pKa value to um, sodium hydride itself. Actually, let's see, I wanna show the carbon label. Show the carbon label, uh, show the, the anion, and uh, let's know. show the anion and the lone pair. And it's probably more uh, acidic than a 
regular uh, uh, sp3 carbon hydrogen bond because there's some amount of resonance stabilization that that lone pair can have let's show the resonance in fact, it's probably as soon as I show uh, the resonance here, you're going to immediately see that we're starting to look like the alene. <clears throat> and then this anion then can pick up a proton. Uh, our base source is ammonia, which was produced in the previous reaction. We can pick up a proton from ammonia. And draw our equilibrium arrows. And now we have our alene intermediate. Uh, I'm going to condense down some of these hydrogens. Actually, take that back. I'm not need to deprotonate one of these. And now we're going to have another proton transfer, uh, another deprotonation by the amide anion and on the same carbon atom. If you take a look at the difference between the internal alkyne and the terminal alkyne, you know, it looks like we've shifted some hydrogen atoms inward. So now get another uh, uh, sort of alenyl anion. My carbon labels. I, I want to show all of these carbons because the alene is uh, kind of tricky. And we have an anion here, and we have a lone pair here. And like the previous alene, the previous alene anion we drew had uh, a resonant structure. So, so too does this one. And in fact, we, uh, it is constructed similarly. Now we have a triple bond. And we have our hydrogen here. I want my. Let's see why am I not being asked to show, show a carbon label? And show carbons. And, go. and now the anion is on the carbon. On the other side, the alkyne has shifted over one position. And then this anion can pick up a hydrogen from ammonia. Oops, not hydrazine ammonia. Yeah. I don't like the way that arrow looks. Let's see. Here we go. Now we have our terminal alkyne. And then, as you know, this. What happened? I'm all right. Something weird happened. I deleted my. Uh, oh yeah. Now we have the terminal alkyne, and the terminal alkyne, as you know, is deprotonated, which is really the fuel to this fire. All of the the equilibrium steps in here have equilibrium constants that are pretty close to one, uh, but it's that deprotonation of the terminal alkyne that really. It just really makes this uh, 
makes this go all the way uh, through. In the final video of this series, I'm just going to highlight uh, some newer reactions that have been developed. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about their mechanisms, but new other ways to synthesize alkynes. Thank you for watching.